Hi, I'm Maitri Daraz, consultant uro urological surgeon. Um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, BPH, which stands for benign prostatic hyperplasia. Uh, this is a very common problem and tends to be um, more of a problem uh, for men as they grow older, uh, particularly after the age of 50. It's a non-cancerous enlargement of the prostate gland um, which can lead to symptoms with your urinary tract and uh, with passing urine. So what are the main symptoms? Um, so symptoms can include a, a range of problems that men can have, including having a deterioration in the stream or the flow of urine. That can be an early warning sign. Um, occasionally, you may have to start and stop uh, when you're passing urine or also have to um, wait a while before urine can come out. Uh, it can also cause problems with having to go too many times to pass urine or wake up at night to pass urine as well. Uh, occasionally you have urinary urgency where you're rushing to go to the toilet because you're not able to hold the urine. It can also be associated with blood in the urine, although this can be serious and that should be uh, seen to immediately, and also urinary tract infections. Diagnosis can be made uh, using a range of uh, tools, a clinical history, um, an examination, uh, a examination of the prostate via rectal examination. Uh, we have certain uh, clinic-based tests such as a euro flow rate which can help us establish whether there is a degree of obstruction to your urinary flow um, and also ultrasound can help size the prostate uh, particularly ultrasound which is introduced through the rectum it's, it's a very reliable way of sizing the prostate and actually inspecting for uh, enlargement so what are the complications of bph well some some men actually have the inability to uh, pass urine completely, which can be an extremely painful and uncomfortable process, in which case they need to uh, go as an emergency to the hospital and have a catheter placed, which is a long plastic tube into the bladder to allow the urine to drain. Other patients may develop urinary tract infections. Uh, you can also get blood in your urine called hematuria. Um, quite uncommon but a dangerous problem is also kidney failure if you get back pressure of that urine into the kidneys and also you can develop bladder stones uh, which can also form if the bladder is not emptying. So what can be done about this? What are, what are the treatment options? Um, it really all depends on the patient, it depends on um, their quality of life and it depends um, on their symptoms. So if someone has quite mild or non-bothersome symptoms, you don't particularly, they may choose not to do anything. They may choose to have a conservative change in lifestyle changes, do more exercise, try and lose some weight, uh, certainly trying to drink plenty of fluids, avoiding triggering fluids such as caffeine uh, can really help people or avoiding drinking too much fluids at night so they're not waking up uh, to pass urine. However, um, a, a lot of men do have more, more than that symptoms wise and um, opt to see us to talk about uh, more treatment options. Um, there are medical therapies which can work extremely well for certain men. Uh, there are also herbal medical therapies, uh, which include um, saw, saw palmetto, which can be bought over the counter. However, the conventional medical therapies, really there are two classes of drugs that we give to patients. Um, one is called an alpha blocker, such as tamsulosin, which can significantly help uh, patients' symptoms with passing urine. And the other can help shrink the prostate. It's a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. And there's two of those on the market in the United Kingdom called dutesteride and finasteride. These do have side effects um, and for some men they just don't work um, and for those men um, the next stage of or the next treatment option is surgery. Surgery has uh, many different options and this is a 
forever evolving field uh, with lots of um, exciting new technology. Uh, there is a class of surgical treatments which are very minimally invasive called um, minimally invasive surgical techniques or MIST therapies. These include steam therapy such as Resume or pros prostatic urethral lift techniques such as Urolift uh, or um, uh, pro prostate artery embolization. Um, and these are day case type procedures uh, which focus predominantly on um, preventing sexual dysfunction, which is one of the side effects of having treatment or surgical treatment for BPH, um, whilst providing a good improvement in the urinary symptoms. Um, there are restrictions with these, and certainly if someone has a grossly enlarged prostate or severe symptoms with the catheter already in place then they may then the patients may need more conventional treatments such as um, a transurethral resection of prostate otherwise known as terp surgery which has been around for several decades um, however there are other options such as laser technology uh, mainly in the form of either green light laser or um, holmium laser and these also have fantastic outcomes uh, the aim there is to treat and remove as much of the prostatic um, enlarged tissue as possible, but and in the compromise of losing some of the sexual, dis um, sorry, ejaculatory function, uh, which is protected in the less invasive treatments. Uh, I tend to favour uh, treatments such as green light laser or the TERP surgery for uh, patients with very enlarged prostates or with a catheter uh, which is already a complicating factor for them and for uh, patients that are more keen on preserving sexual function and have less bothersome symptoms then um, steam therapy called resume i think works very well however each each uh, patient is different each prostate is unique and certainly a uh, patient um, patient doctor discussion regarding these options is absolutely fundamental to get the right one for you.